Hello, welcome back to the woods and welcome back to a little update on these. My do-it-yourself zero drop bush boots. So last time I looked, I think 44,000 people had tuned in to see this little video on how I turned a set of old desert boots that were gonna go in the bin into a, a zero drop bush boot. Lots and lots of people have since got in touch and said, how did you get on? Did it work? Is there anything you changed? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to compare this, my little homemade ones, with this. And this is a set of Vivo Barefoot Neo Trails. Great little shoe that I've used for years and is my preferred footwear in this warmer weather. So how do these two compare? You're going to find out in this video. But first, a cup of tea. So I've had the boots a couple of months and it's been the summer months, so July, August and into September. Obviously they started out life as a pair of desert boots and that is what I've used them as, a warm weather boot. And that's what they excel at. What I wanted was something that was comfortable, lightweight, I didn't need socks on, it was just there as a foot covering, something to protect my feet in the warm weather. So, lightweight. Yes, they are lightweight. A pair weighs in at 740 grams, which is considerably lighter than they were when they had the original sole unit on. So they're a nice lightweight boot. They're nice and comfortable. They are quite a wide fit. They're still shoe shaped, not foot shaped, but they are very, very comfortable. They lace up at the front so you can adjust them and you can close the top off. The suede is very, very lightweight, and so they dry pretty quickly. Certainly first thing in the morning, walking through the grass, they're, yeah, they're gonna get wet because the, the, the dew is gonna soak them. But they do dry out pretty quickly. And because I'm not wearing socks inside, again, that all helps with, with the keeping your feet relatively dry, and if they do get wet, they dry out quick. One of the things that people express concerns about was the fact that there is no tread on the bottom. Well, there's a slight texture to it, but it's not a tread like we're used to. Yes, if it's muddy and it's that sort of clay, greasy type mud, they do slip around a bit, but not more than anything else. The rest of the time, well, they're absolutely fine. In fact, this smooth surface, if you're going up slopes, acts a little bit like uh, a set of rock climbers, sticky, shoes you've got a large surface area which is in full contact with the surface you're on and it generates friction so from that point of view they're pretty good the lack of a heel well 
I've been using barefoot shoes on and off for about the last 10 years and I don't mind it. If you're new to it, it takes a little bit of getting used to. On longer walks, you just have to modify slightly the way you walk, otherwise you're gonna get very sore heels. For running, that's a completely different ball game. You can have to modify the way you run considerably. But for general use, I like a flat boot and I think they're very, very good. And I've been very pleased with these. I'm gonna compare them with my Vivos, just to take you through where I think the differences are. So these are my Vivo Barefoot Neo Trails. These are very lightweight. They're 580 grams a pair. They are very grippy. You can see there's quite an aggressive sole on the outside, which is pretty good. However, if it's that wet, greasy, clay type mud, they still slip and slide just like any other footwear. They are foot shaped as opposed to shoe shaped, so they do allow your feet to spread out that little bit more. And the sole is very, very thin. You do get full contact with the ground and you can feel twigs, stones, everything through there. Adjustability, pretty good. Normal set of laces at the front. They're a very lightweight shoe materials wise. They don't keep the weather out at all. They dry relatively quickly. There's quite a lot of fabric and padding around the top here. That does take a while to dry. The tongue, again, that does take a while to dry. The forefoot isn't too bad. The forefoot dries fairly quickly. As I said, I've had these about 10 years. Good item. So how do the two actually compare? Well, comfort wise, there's nothing in it. Weight wise, when they're on, not a lot in it. Drying time, well, these are very thin suede, lined with a bit of cambrel. There's not a whole lot of padding anywhere. They dry relatively quickly. Slightly quicker, surprisingly, than these, the more modern ones. Grip wise, well, you would think that these would be extra grippy compared to these. Again, not really the case. If it's very greasy, very muddy, very slippery, well, there's not a lot in it. For general use, in the summer, when it's dry, there's not a lot in it. The place where it does differ, well, these are cut like a traditional shoe, and they have that scoop out around there so that it doesn't interfere and rub on your Achilles. What it does do is it allows debris off the woodland floor into your shoes and you do find that through the course of the day you pick up quite a bit of stuff which you then have to take the shoe off and empty it out. With these, these are that bit higher. The adjustable lacing means I can close them in around the top of my ankle. It doesn't keep everything out but it keeps an awful lot out. Certainly I put these on at the beginning of the day when I go out into the woods and I don't usually take them off until the night time and that's usually when I might empty out the odd little thing that's got inside. But nothing that's going to cause me any discomfort through the course of the day. So actually, there's not a lot in it between these two, other than the cost. Now, Vivo don't do these anymore. They do something very similar. The closest I could find was about £130. These, well... These were going to be thrown out. They originally cost me 30 quid. I then went through the soles, soles fell off, started to fall off, and I resold them. I then spent about, I think it was about 15 pounds in totals in buying the materials, the glue, etc. So even if I was to do it from brand new, it would have cost me 45 pounds. One of the other big differences I did note between the two is with the Vivo shoes, they've got a sole that you can feel the ground through. And you'd think it would be the sticks, the stones, those type of things that you are really aware of. It's not. The thing you are really aware of is the temperature of the ground. In the winter, I tend to chuck a set of felt insoles inside them. In the summer, they're great for in the woods, but when you go out into the open, if you're on a long walk 
over hard packed trails where the ground's very, very warm, your feet get very, very warm. Now with these, that sole's a little bit thicker. Now I've also got inside a set of mesh insoles. I can still feel the ground, but I don't notice the temperature as much in these. In fact, you don't notice it at all. So these have become, over the last couple of months, my go-to favorite warm weather boots. I absolutely love them. And if you're looking to do something similar, I would urge you to do it, give it a go. If you just wanna go into the, have a, have a go at the, the zero drop uh, world, then this is quite a cheap way of doing it. Take an old pair of desert boots, resole them, but with no heel, give it a try. If you don't get on with it, well, it hasn't cost you anything, you could even probably stick a heel on there just to raise them up that little bit. So if you enjoyed this video, then remember, hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe to the channel. If you look in the description box down below, you will also find a link to my Instagram and my Facebook pages. Pop over there, give me a follow. And there are also links to my Etsy shop, the Green Craft Shop. If you keep an eye on that in the next few days, there are gonna be some items coming up for sale. Just a little heads up, but I'm only telling you. <clears throat> there is also a link down there to my Patreon page. You can get involved with the channel. There is also a link down there to my Spreadshirt shop. Over there you will find some of my exclusively designed, I, I design them, Greencraft t-shirts. Pop over there, get yourself a t-shirt, show your support for the channel. I think that's everything. I've been Neil, and until next time, stay safe.